I was nine, I took appendicitis and uh, I was off school. And what happened was I had blood poisoning and infection after the operation and, and I was quite ill and I'd get sent home. And my dad was away and my mum had got a part-time job cleaning the school at the back of our house. So she said, if you need anything, just stand at the back window and wave. Well, the minute she was out of that house, there was this red dress lying on the bed and I was drawn to this red dress and her high heels. So I'm clumping about the house, quite the thing, in her high <laughs> heels and this red dress. And what I didn't notice was the window cleaner who saw me. And the safest place when you're nine is, well, it was three days before my ninth birthday. My mum had got me a bike, a rally shopper bike, and I was desperate to get out. But I promised my mum I wouldn't go out. I still had my stitches in, I was still pretty weak. So I hid under the bed when this guy saw me. And the next thing I heard was the door getting battered in. So I kind of peeked my head around the door and he was looking through the letterbox and he said, you need to give your mum this note. And I said, my mum's not in. And he said, I know, but you have to give her this. Can you let me in a minute? So I kind of gingerly opened the door and he forced his way in and he raped me. And his final words to me were, if you tell anyone, I'll tell what I saw you doing. So uh, when you're nine, that's quite a big thing. And um, so what I did was, uh, well, he'd, he'd left me, and he'd um, <coughs> burst all my stitches. He'd left me quite bruised and bleeding. So, so I took my bike to the front doorstep and we had like six or seven steps down and I threw my bike down and I broke on my bike. And when my mum came home, I told her I'd come off my bike. So that kind of, well, I was rushed into hospital and uh, I was six months in hospital. The doctors thought it was just my blood poisoning again. They thought I was run down, but I never told a soul about that. I didn't tell my mum. I couldn't tell my mum about that, I couldn't. And then um, I'll never forget when, she came home and found me on the step. She actually slapped me across the ear because of my bike, but it was shock. I'm ashamed of not telling my mum what happened to me, but there never seemed to be a good time, you know, um, illnesses, always something to come up. Anyway, uh, like I say, it was six months in hospital and when I came out of hospital, I was quite a different person, you know, I'm um, shy, quiet, moody, and I tried to bury my feelings, my femininity that I had, I tried to bury all that. And uh, my dad left the army and when I was about 12, we come back to Scotland and sorry, am I going on too much? Okay. When we come back to Scotland, it was the first day, it was the first time I had ever really come across religion and I was born a Catholic but I never went to chapel or anything because army was mixed religion. So I was going to this high school and there was a young priest there and he seemed so nice, really nice. And he said to us, if you've got any problems, come and see me, anything at all. You know that high school's a big step, things are changing for you, so come and see me. So I uh, took a couple of weeks, but I went to see him. And I told him the story that I've just told you. And he told me that God would forgive me. So I uh, buried it and buried it and buried it. I hid my female self. Oh. Well, that story probably sounds a bit terrible actually, but trust me, it gets better. And then um, I managed that until I was about 18, 19, and then the new romantic stuff was out. Spandau Valley, Boy George, all that, all that kind of Marilyn, Steve Strange visage. And it was more acceptable then for boys to look like girls. And I got the strength again 
to start being my female self. And I went down to this nightclub just prior to the Commonwealth Games in Edinburgh. And I went to this club called The Blitz. Have you heard of that? Steve Stranges. Do you know who Steve Strange is? Aye, well, that was his club. So I went there and Marilyn was there. Spandau Valley were playing that night. I met Boy George and I had never seen, I would never imagined a place like that in my life where I was so accepted. So that was the first time that I really felt accepted to show my female self. That was when the penny dropped for me. I, uh, I had longer hair, long on one side, I a little look at it. <laughs> and uh, I wore loads of makeup and dressed almost unisex, you know. So that's quite funny, isn't it? We were talking about the Commonwealth Games. <laughs>